Greetings, family. This is your girl, Joy. Y'all, I wasn't going to get on, but as I was doing my nightly walk um, where I kind of go get my exercise on and I kind of just fellowship with the Lord as I'm walking around my neighborhood, um, God kind of spoke to my spirit and I felt led to share with you guys uh, last night, but I didn't get a chance to do that. But after watching a YouTube video today, um, I think the person's name was, her name's called Lala Jenkins, and she was doing a video talking about Beyonce's new hair care line and how uh, people should not buy this line, especially Christians, and how we need to be careful um, with this line because she has dedicated this line to her gods, to her deities that she worships. And just hearing her have to explain like kind of step by step why it is not a wise idea to buy this line and literally put the products on our crown. And after watching that video, I was like, you know what? I need to get on here and speak to you guys. Now, she obviously came, you know, with a more polite, uh, atmosphere and I really appreciated her video. So shout outs to her. I will put the link to her video in the description box below, but I need to, we need to have a talk. And this is mostly for my Christians who use the title, but they don't live the life. It's sad that we have to plead and give all this evidence in order to show that something that you should already know by the spirit of God. When Beyonce came out with her hair care line, first of all, Beyonce coming out with the hair care line is already strange in and of itself. Um, but when she came out with this hair care line, immediately in, in my spirit, I knew that it was an absolute no. And that this is something that we should not be letting nowhere near our strands and yet you will have people who call themselves a christian people who say they're believers say they're children of god and yet not only are they buying this woman's music going to this woman's concerts but they're also now purchasing these products to put on their crown our hair y'all is considered our crown is considered our glory god was very specific and very um uh intentional when he talked about the protection of our hair our hair represents our covering and so it at the end of the day y'all we should know that this is not right we should know that as God's children, we should not be engaging, participating, supporting, and attending um, to the things that this woman represents and the things that this woman is putting out um, for public consumption. And yet we are engaging um, in these, in we are engaging in this behavior. We are engaging in her music, engaging in her products, and let me tell y'all something, God is not pleased. He is not pleased. And anyone who's a parent, let's, let's talk about being a parent for a minute. When you are a parent and you send your child out somewhere with, let's say, another group of people, you're going to pull your child to the side and you're going to say, look, I know what I've taught you. You know what I've taught you. When you go out there, you represent my name. These are the rules and the expectations that I have of you and how you are con to conduct yourself when you go out. Don't let me find out that you are not doing what you're supposed to be doing because when I find out, I'm going to come and whoop your behind. Why do we think any less different about God? If, if we claim God is our father, do we really think that God is pleased with how we are conducting ourselves as those who carry his name, those who are supposed to carry his presence and carry his glory into this earth. We think that by us participating in these things that God is pleased, he is not. And let me tell y'all something. Let me tell you the danger 
that you guys are doing because this is not for the rest of the world. Those who belong to the world, those who don't claim Christ, those who don't claim God, they are under the 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 dominion, they are under the control of the evil one. But I'm talking to those of you who claim to be Christ followers. I'm talking to those of you who claim you to go to church every Sunday and know all the Christian cliches, but still want to dine with the devil, still want to play with fire. If you play with fire, the end result is you're going to get burned. And as a parent, if I told you, if I gave you rules, if I told you that if you break these rules, there will be consequences and repercussions, then understand if you play and engage in activities, behaviors, and activities that are not of God, there is going to be a consequence to pay. And let me tell you something, for those of you who consider yourself part of the beehive, but yet you claim on, on Sundays to be Christians, you are opening yourself up to a world of trouble. And if you put, buy those products and put those products on your crown, understand me now that there are going to be consequences and repercussions for that. Because by now you should know where that woman stands. She has been very clear through her artistry, through her music, through her lyrics, through her visuals who she represents and God, the God of God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is not the God that she represents. But see, the problem is, the problem is we love to sin. The problem is there are children that wish to be rebellious. And you know, let me tell you something. I'm not talking to those who are struggling. There is a difference between those who struggle with sin and they are calling out to God. They are reaching out to God. They are leaning upon his grace and leaning on his strength. Maybe they're in a stronghold and God understands that. And so he's patient with them, giving them the grace that they need to be an overcomer. No, I'm not talking about the struggling Christian. I'm talking about the fake Christian. I'm talking about the one who claims the title, but does not live the life. And at one point in time, that was me. And let me tell you something, God sent my friend who had died years before he sent my friend to tell me that God is going to punish you. And I tried to throw at him all the, the excuses of God knows my heart and, you know, God knows my intent. And we, we love to throw that out there. But he said, if your heart is right, then you would do what's right. So we, what we need to stop doing is stop taking God for a fool. God is loving, God is merciful, God is gracious, but he, the word of God says he does not leave the guilty unpunished. And there have been many times throughout the scriptures, if we would get to our Bibles and read our Bibles, there are many times where God had no problem punishing the children of Israel. Uh, there was no time where he did not allow Many of the children of Israel to not enter the promised land because of their consistent disobedience and rebellion and, um, and lack of faith. Faith is not just a word, people. Faith is not just a belief. Faith is an action. It is an action. And if we think that we can dance with darkness, if we think that we can play with the, the side of evil, and that God is going to be understanding about it. Make no mistake about it. Just as a parent is going to whoop their child behind, not a parent ain't going to whoop no child that don't belong to them. Those of us who are parents will understand this. The parent is going to whoop the children that either belong to them or say they belong to them. That's who the parent's going to come and reprimand. Listen to me, y'all. We are in a time and a season where God is saying enough isn't enough. And we must understand as the word says, judgment is going to begin in the house. God is going to be doing a great shaking up and a great cleaning up. And if you are not solidified in Christ, if you are not walking in the ways of God, if you are not making an effort to draw near to him and to allow him to cleanse you by the washing of his word, to purge your character, to purge the sin from among his people, then make no, no mistake about it. There will be consequences and repercussions. And I am here to tell you 
that when you play with fire, you are going to get burned. You call yourself wanting to support that woman. That woman cares nothing about you. She cares about making money and she cares about having control, power, and dominion over the ignorant. And this is so much bigger than Beyonce. It's so much bigger than the Beyonce. The real issue is our rebellion and our constant, our heart of disobedience and idolatry. That's the real problem. That's been the problem since the dawn of time. And it is the problem that still remains to this day. But let me tell y'all something. In 2024, God ain't playing. In 2024, there are going to be two major things taking place within both kingdoms within the kingdom of darkness and within the kingdom of light. There's going to be a great shaking up in the kingdom of darkness where things will be exposed, things will be laid bare. Those who claim to be walking in righteousness, those who claim to be walking in, in goodness and holiness, if they are living a life of hypocrisy, the rug is going to be snatched out from under their feet. And they're going to have a great and mighty fall. You're going to see big names falling all over the place. People's pedestals being ripped out from under, from under them. The pedestals that you put that you put them on. The places of idolatry that you put them in on children of God. God is going to be ripping these idols apart. He's going to be tearing these shrines down. And let me tell you something. If you are connected. If you look back as Lot's wife did, you will suffer the judgment that is going to fall upon these false idols. We need to stop playing with God. We need to stop. And you know what? You know, there are times, let me tell y'all something. There are times where I will think to myself, Joy, why even bother getting on talking about this? There are about 10 other people that said the same thing. So maybe 10 is enough. But if I realize that God is so merciful because that means his spirit is pricking his ministers, his ministers of the gospel, his spirit is agitating them to the point because he loves his children so much that he wants to warn them. And if it takes 25 people to warn you, if it takes a hundred people to say the same exact message, then he will do that because that's how he loved much. He loves you. And not only that, but when he get ready to open up a can of whoop behind on y'all, y'all not going to have no excuse because about a hundred people said the same thing to, for you to get your life right, to start focusing on what matters the most, stop being distracted by the devil's schemes and plans and put your eyes towards the cross, put your eyes towards God. So there is a reason that I'm on here and it's not just to waste space. It's not to waste time. It's to be another voice crying out in the wilderness. It's to be another voice of reason. It's to be another voice of warning because a time and we are in this time now where that kingdom of darkness is going to get shaken up like never before, where God's house is being shaken up so that all the roaches that don't belong there are going to fall by the wayside. Those people who call themselves believers, those people who call themselves Christians, but are not walking by the spirit of the Lord are going to get shaken up and they're going to fall off so that God's people can shine. And let me speak to my, my, my believers out there. Let me speak to my people, my, my children, the children of God who are pressing towards the mark of the high calling. What God ministered to my spirit the other night, there are things that the devil has tried to take from my life. There are things that the devil has tried to steal from me, my joy that he's tried to steal from me. And there are times where I come before God and I say, God, will you not take revenge or get make right what the devil has tried to make wrong in my life and he says my child continue to walk by faith because i am not a man that i should lie and everything that i promise you even though the devil has tried to steal each and every one of them i will give you double for your trouble this is the message for the children of god you, whatever the devil's tried to steal from you, whatever he's tried to take from you and thought he was going to win, he thought you were going to give up. He thought you were going to concede. 
But because you have stayed faithful, because you continue to walk by faith, because you continue to trust in God and to move forward and to keep your eyes focused on what God has called you to, God says, I will give you double for your trouble. Make no mistake, there is no thing as downgrade in the kingdom of heaven. He says, I will take you from glory to glory. What the devil has stole from you, I will upgrade you. And I will give you more than what you ever hoped for, more than what you could ever think or imagine. Continue to walk by faith. Continue to do what I've called you to do. Continue to believe in the promises that I've given you. Continue to hold fast. Do not get distracted by the left or distracted by the right. Do not get distracted from who's falling away and what's going on with the kingdom of darkness. What's going on, the shaking up that's going on in the church and the body of Christ. I am shaking what does not belong to me off of me. But continue to stay focused and continue to hold fast to what I have promised you and believe it will come to pass. And in due season, it will come and it will not delay. That is God's message. That is the message that he gave me the other night. And he strengthened and encouraged my spirit. And I want to strengthen and encourage those who are continuing to be faithful to the most high. That God has not forgotten you. He will restore everything that the enemy has tried to steal from you. With, and he will give you double for your trouble. He will give you double for your trouble. We may be going through a time of testing, but you better believe when you come out on the other side, you will be refined as silver. You will be refined as silver. But let me make no mistake about it. Let me warn those of you who continue to carry the name of God. The word of God, that is one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not take the Lord of the God, the Lord thy God, and shall not take his name in vain. And a lot of people tend to think it's all about saying, oh my gosh, and saying Jesus and all this stuff. About Let me tell you what I believe taking the name of the Lord in vain is. It is when you call yourself carrying the title of the Most High, carrying his name and his presence throughout the earth, and yet you are living like a devil. Make no mistake about it. God will punish you for that because God says my name will be holy among the people. So let me tell you something. Get your life right. Stop playing with the most high. Stop taking his mercy and his grace and his kindness for granted because though he has mercy and gives it to thousands upon thousands of generations to those who love him, he will punish the unbeliever. He will punish those who mock him. He will punish those who think that if they sow according to their flesh, that they will reap a blessing. He will, make no mistake about it, he will give you your just due reward. It is time to decide. One thing the young lady said at the end of the video, she said she came from the book of Joshua as he was speaking to the children of Israel. And he said, if you want to go and serve those gods, then serve those gods. But if you choose to serve the most high, if you choose to stand by Yahweh, then stand by Yahweh. But what you cannot do is you cannot mix the sacred with the sacrilege. You cannot mix. You cannot mix light with darkness. They have no fellowship together. You cannot be on the fence. There is no middle ground. And one day God is going to tear off the fence and there will be no such thing as a fence, but there will either be black or white. The Bible talks about this great falling away and it is coming and it is happening. It is up to you to decide who you will serve, but you cannot serve both. You cannot serve both. Judgment is coming and it's going to begin in the house first. Decide today whom you will choose to serve. Love you. I will talk to you soon. Bye.